Hi, I'm Donna from The Masquerade, and I'm working on this Dancing Batiks pattern by Quiltworks, and it has a lot of curves. And um, there's a couple ways you can do curves, and I'll show you them all. I've come across this cool little notion. It's a Curve Master presser foot. Got mine at martellinotions.com. A friend of mine told me about these, and they work pretty good. So I'm going to demonstrate that for you right now. So working on this dancing batik block. So now it's time to put these three pieces together. So we have two curved seams here. I'm going to start with the smaller one. And what I like to do is find the center of the piece by just folding it in half and giving it a pinch. And that gives me a little mark that I can see. And then I fold this one in half and I give it a pinch. However, I already know that the center of this block happens to be right along this seam for the, for the goose. So now that I have them marked, I can lay this one right sides together and I can line up my fold here that I just made with a little crease right up with the edge of that bottom foot of the goose. And I'm going to be working with this obtuse curve on the bottom, so I'm going to pin it on the other side and I'll just pin it along that seam of the goose. And now I get to line up the end curve. And I just want to make sure that my raw edges are even on the straight. And I have a little bit of extra fabric in that seam right there at the beginning. So I'm just going to trim that out and put a pin. And I weave my pin in and out a couple times. And then I match up the other end as well. Now to ease in all this extra I have here. So a suggestion is to use a glue pen. I have a Fonz and Porter glue pen. It doesn't really matter. There's a bunch of them out there. They're all the same thing. And I can lay this fabric down and see that it's going to match perfectly between my two pins. And so if I just put a couple dots of glue and stick it right along that raw edge, it won't shift at all while I'm sewing it. That holds it really nice. And this one too. And you just make sure that your edges are, are even and that everything is laying flat when you do that little bit of glue. And you don't put a ton of glue. I just put dots right in the seam allowance. And that just holds it nicely. You can then take it over to your steam iron and give it a steam, although I have no water in this, so I'm not going to do that right now. You don't really need to. It's laying pretty flat. These are gentle curves. So now you take it over to your machine and stitch it on a quarter inch mark. So here we are at the machine. I've got, I've got it next to the quarter inch mark, the raw edges, and I'm just going to back tack a little bit and pull the pins as I go. It goes pretty quickly. I'm just going to press this towards the geese. So it's laying nice and flat. And now we'll put on the next one. Same thing. I'm going to fold it in half, give it a little pinch. It happens to be right where that straight seam of the bottom of the goose is, the third goose. And then this one too. Fold it in half, give it a little pinch. And now I know where to match it up to that goose. And I've got this 
smile on the top and I've got the obtuse curve on the bottom. These seams are so gentle, these curves are so gentle. You don't even have to glue it really if you don't want to. If you feel more secure with the glue, definitely use the glue. If you like using that special curved foot, that Curve Master foot, use the Curve Master foot. However you can get it done, that's easiest for you. I'm going to show you this one without the glue. So again, I'm going to just back tack a couple stitches, pull the pin out, and I'm going to hold it in the middle, and I'm just going to ease this in as I go. And I can see that it fits pretty nicely. Here we are at the middle. I'll pull that pin and the rest of it should ease nicely as well. These are such gentle curves with this pattern. There's not too much stress here. On you or the curve. So here's what it looks like. It snaps onto your machine. There is a little plastic guard that doesn't bend or wiggle at all. It's a quarter inch mark. And the foot itself is fairly short. Um, and that's so that you can hold your fabric up as it's feeding down through the machine and you're able to put your two pieces together. So let me show you how that works. So the first thing I'm going to do is lighten my seams a little bit by clipping out just a little bit of that bulk. And then this fits right under the foot. And it's up against my guard. And I am going to back tack a little bit just to make sure that that doesn't pull away. And once I get the first couple stitches in I can take out my pin. And now, what they suggest is using curved tweezers to line up your pieces together and to hold them up in the air a bit as you're feeding it through the foot. I have my center pin in here where I'm holding and I just want to make sure that it's going to fit without any creases and it, and it really fits very nicely. So I'm just going to hold them together and feed them through. And no glue is necessary here. And when you get to the very end, make sure it matches. Good look. There it is. So at this point, I'm going to iron towards the, the geese. Wonderful. Love it. So now to put the next one on, you do, you do the same thing. You fold it in half. Give yourself a pinch at the middle spot so I can find that again. And fold it in half. And again, a pinch here is just going to mean that I'm right on that 
that straight seam to the bottom leg of the goose. And then I match up my center. Matching it up with that goose right there. And I am going to pin it. Now this time I'm going to do it, sew it from the other side because the people that make this curved master foot say that they prefer sewing it with the obtuse circle on the top. And I don't think it really makes much of a difference using that foot. I've done it both ways, but I'll show you that this way works just as well. And if you don't have one of these great feet, you can do it the traditional way by putting a little bit of glue in the seam allowance. And using your quarter inch foot. Once I get it started, I can manipulate it. And so I'm going to show you a little better what I'm doing here. So I'm holding the pin and I'm sort of tugging a little bit to stretch so that I can make sure that it's all going to fit nice. And I like to make sure underneath is, is laying as flat as it can. And I kind of just make sure that there's an even amount of, of fabric along here as I grab it in the middle. And from there I can just make sure my edges are even. Once in a while I gotta stop and fix the bottom fabric. Because right now that's the one that has all the extra. And then when I get to the middle, I can pull that pin out. You can actually lay it almost flat because the the foot, the toes on the foot are so small that it uh, it works really well. Here we are at the end. And let's look at this one. Very nice. And I'm going to press that towards the geese. Very sweet. These gentle curves fall in really pretty nicely. They, they don't need a lot of coaxing. So that's it. Uh, 16 blocks, 32 curves, and then you're ready to put the whole thing together. Easy peasy.